Welcome back to our motherfucking channel, Warriors. We are still growing. If you haven't had the PIO for the Department of Corrections, California, smash that subscribe button. Make sure she smashes it right now. This episode right here, I'm just going to dive into it, man. I was, 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 was the public information officer, the PIO. Motherfucking looking all good in a suit, looking like John Wick. With a pencil. Hector, don't fuck around, my boy. Don't fuck around. Get straight to the point. All right, here we go. In August of 2020, Mexican Mafia member inmate Joe Mendez, a.k.a. Yoda from Westminster, and his goons, his entourage, his camaradas, his bodyguards, all pulled out weapons and started stabbing the fucking dog shit out of two COs in particular, right? Then all the other COs started coming. Then the Sureños jumped up and everybody was fighting. It was a melee, code three riot, staff assault. Code three staff assault, I should say. That day, I was uh, simultaneously wearing two hats. I was a crisis response team commander, which is equivalent to a SWAT team commander. And I was the public information officer, the PIO, fucking doing both roles. I got a call from Terry Hardy the spokesperson for the California Department of Corrections, on my state cell phone. They be giving you a state cell phone when you're in those luxurious positions. Like, hey, don't speak to the media. Don't speak to the media. We're going to handle this. I remember thinking, well, that's weird. I remember where I was when I got that call. I was in the outside of the armory, right? The armory is where we have all our guns, every, every motherfucking gun you can think of. <clears throat> I was waiting for the, for the other team members to get there. And I remember thinking, oh, that's weird. But, hey, I have a lot going on right now. Like, cool, whatever, more off my plate. That, that was what went through my head. Boom, off, right? I, got, I don't want to talk to the media. I want to help. <laughs> help. Anyway, no, that was serious, okay? Fast forward. It was an ugly feeling not knowing. It was an ugly feeling that knowing that the rest of the world didn't know what had just transpired inside of RJD Bravo Yard as a result of incompetence, as a result of Marcus Pollard and Mario Carrillo and every other dumb manager in between. But those were the two key players, right? <clears throat> you see, Pollard used to work with Carrillo at Kelepat. Sure, Carrillo in his own little ways kissed his ass, of course, Dude is not, dude, the dude is not, does not have it all up here. Motherfucker is missing a few screws. And he made best friends with a Mexican mafia member. Why? How? How did that happen? Because they were going to flip, they had just flipped Bravo Yard. And there was more, I can't remember. There was more blacks on that yard. There was a lot, the blacks were fucking deep. And you know what's crazy? Well, I won't go into that. The blacks were fucking deep, man. And I already told you, when you get, when you get any of one race, oh, they come out of control, wild, disrespectful, all at the cops, because they don't have to worry about, I just said it, they don't have to worry about other people. <laughs> when they brought Yoda down from high desert on a special transfer that I never even knew was possible, hand-picked, <laughs> well, bugger, sure picking some winners there, Pollard. That's when the Southerners started arriving, the Sureños, and then all of a sudden the blacks were like, hey, good morning, LT, good motherfucker, you just told me to fuck off, suck your dick on your dead homies yesterday, what changed, man, what changed? I knew it, I knew it in my head, motherfuckers, we finna take over this motherfucker. <laughs> Hector, I knew you were a Southside sympathizer, no, I don't like getting disrespected by anybody, right, by anybody, right? So I'm getting attacked by lions. Motherfucker, throw some tigers in there. Let them fucking fight. I don't give a fuck, right? That was my mentality. That's Green's mentality. You ain't gonna disrespect me. Don't bite me. Bite that motherfucker. You bite each other. I don't give a fuck. Anyways, four minutes into it, you know the backstory. Hector, what is this one about? All right. This one is about CDCR, California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, is so <clears throat> not transparent. So not transparent as a claim. You already know this, right? So since I failed, failed, failed to make a notification to the public on the day that inmate Yoda stabbed the shit out of everybody and then PC'd up at Calipat, 
Um, here's my opportunity to let the world know what allegedly happened at Jamestown Sierra Conservation Center at approximately January 21st. Well, heck, what the hell happened in Jamestown? We haven't heard shit from CDCR. We see all these Disneyland videos. We see all these foosball videos. We see all this hacky sack videos. We see the women's institution videos. Yeah, what, did, what have I been trying to tell you? Okay, so allegedly on that day, unconfirmed sources are saying that a female correctional officer was sexually assaulted over a period of hours by an inmate. Now, wouldn't you think, hey, man, that's something we should know about, right? I, I would say, man, we're the third largest law enforcement agency. I say, when I say we are, I'm talking about my former employer. We are the largest, third largest law enforcement agency in the United States. It goes NYPD, Border Patrol, CDCR. Well, Hector, that is currently under investigation. That is nobody's business. Need I not remind you? I guarantee nothing will happen in CDCR that is more important than two Navy SEALs off the coast of Somalia falling off into the water, right, chasing the Hoosies, and losing their life in combat. Our own government let us know, hey, we lost two Navy SEALs at sea. They are lost at sea, right? You, the California Department of Corrections has got so comfortable and so used to hiding their dirt, hiding their dirt, hiding their dirt, that it, 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 it damaged them. Right. It did irreparable damage. They do it. They do it at the institution level. Captains hide their dirt. AWs hide their dirt. Well, not anymore because you got your boy Hector Bravo. Right. And I got nothing to lose. I already walked away from my job. What are you going to do? Come after me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Motherfuckers. <sighs> that was me just blowing. Don't worry about that. Like, get out of here, mosquitoes. With that being said, I think that the world should know. I think Terry Hardy should get on the fucking camera and say that we had an incident. We had a major incident, right? At the end of this, I'm going to post her phone number. If I can find it on the state government website that she demands. So, Hector, is there a person of interest is there a person of interest in this case? Uh, well, you know, I don't give you half-hearted information. Never have, never will. There is a person of interest. This fellow right here. This person of interest has been detained for questioning. Damn, Hector, you're the best, man. No, you're the best. Gracias a ti y tu celly. It's called doing the right thing, right? It's called doing the right thing. That's all the public wants to know. The public doesn't want to be fooled. The public don't even need details. Right? We don't need to know the female officer's name. We don't even need to know the male or the suspect's name. We just want to know that, hey, something happened at this prison. Cool, thank you. Maybe now I can start trusting you. It's going to take fucking a decade. It's going to take centuries, but maybe now I can start trusting you. And trusting that when my loved ones get incarcerated and go to prison, they're not going to get killed for fucking incompetence, gross negligence, ineptitude, right? When my child decides to put on a badge and go walk and be proud in a correctional setting, they know they're not going to get thrown to the wolves. Over political agendas, dishonesty, unethicalness, immoralness, selfish uh, goals, personal uh, self-preservation. It's all fucking disgusting. It's not fucking hard, right? It's not fucking hard.
And if you don't know how to be a good person, watch my videos for the last year. Right? I'm not saying I'm a good person, but I, I'll tell you what, I'm fucking honest. I'm fucking honest. <laughs> and that's a, that, that's, I think people just want honesty, man. It's a, everybody has ugly truths. Everybody has ugly truths. With that, let's go to the next fucking uh, major breaking news, man. And this is from my people, too, my gente. What the fuck? I swear to God, man, if I had a dollar for every negligent discharge, I swear I make a video every other week about a, neg- a CRT, crisis response team having a negligent discharge. I'm fucking believable. Hector, don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to embarrass us. A negligent discharges across the state of California isn't embarrassing to you? You better get with the fucking program. Come on, man. My worker, what are you going to wait for? My worker gets killed. They're not going to report it anyways. My worker, the whole goddamn thing's shady. Now, the CRT program is definitely not shady. But they do have to keep their fucking finger off the trigger. Off the trigger. Off the trigger. Right, well, don't do this. Just keep it straight. I was thinking, and I did a little live yesterday. If, if, if Hector Bravo was in charge of the... um. CRT program at all institutions, this is what I would do. I would get those rubber duckies. Rubber duckies are fake blue guns, right? That, or I would get a two by four. I would go, I would have every CRT commander go to Home Depot and get two by fours, right? And cut them off at a good little length. I will have every operator hold that two by four and keep their fingers straight off that fucking thing. Now you may think, oh, that's humiliating. That's humiliating. Good, let it be humiliating. Oh, well, why? Why do our, why does our team in Pelican Bay have to do it when it was Ironwood that fucked up? Chuck Awala that fucked up. Why? Because everybody wears the same patch. It's a crisis response team. Punishment by the masses, right? Sometimes I think maybe I could put your finger there and hit it with a hammer. I guarantee that you wouldn't fucking pull that fucking trigger again. Damn, Hector, you be harsh. Motherfucker, at what point in time do we get careless with guns? At what point in time do we just, you know... You know who does that? Gangsters. Pop them things when they ain't supposed to be popping them things. They ain't even supposed to be having them. Fuck. Damn, Hector, you're that passionate about helping, safety, lives, honesty. Are you a saint, Hector? Oh, no. By far, I make my mistakes. Let me tell you. I'm always in the doghouse. I'm always in the fucking doghouse. <laughs> Can't talk too loud, right? Another thing, if I was in charge of the crisis response team. And that's another thing. CTR didn't put that out. Hey, one of our fucking tactical members shot another one in the motherfucking leg. They flew him out in a helicopter. Damn, like that, G? That's what I heard. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, right? I would, uh... Yeah, again, if I was in charge of the whole CRT program. You, you guys don't think like me. I'm on a whole other level. I would issue a memorandum. I will cu- I'll get on a FaceTime call. The fucking teams with every commander and every team. And I will say, hey, immediately, effective immediately. All your fucking troops, all the operators, take off their patches. Take I don't want to see no fucking St. Michael patch. I don't want to see no motherfucking Punisher patch. I don't want to see no USMC patch. I don't want to see no patches, right? Their fucking f- finger, their minds need to be on where their finger needs to be off the trigger. Damn, like that hecker, that's harsh. Way too many, way too many negligent discharges, way too many, right? Let's go back to the basics, back to the basics. The whole OP1, the whole OP2, you should have a fucking finger passing test. I swear to fucking God you should. Let me see your fucking finger. Let me see your fucking finger. I'll break this motherfucker. Where the cigar cutters at? Fucking assholes want to embarrass the whole fucking team, disrespect the whole program, motherfuckers. Oh no, Hector, happen. It can happen to anybody. Fuck you. Never happened to me, and I've been around guns twenty fucking years. Never happened except with my homie Weeks. I said it on the live yesterday. My homie Weeks literally fucking almost killed us with the forty millimeter high uh, high explosive grenade launcher. That is a fucking true story. Weeks, my boy, love you to death. I will fucking die for you to this day. But you did almost kill us. It's water under the bridge. That day, I almost died three or four times. That's a true fucking story. Anyways, this was a banger. Breaking news. Shout out to all the people that blessed me yesterday. I was going to fucking start popping off the names, but I had to get this out. Uh, I I will say the names on the next episode. Don't you forget that. I am a very grateful individual. It was a lot of people that blessed me on that live. On those live. Unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. That's how I eat. Thank you. Um... And all the new patrons, all the new patrons, I keep getting the emails, one just signed up right before this, man, please, please, if you want to see, I'm about to drop something right now, you guys will like that over there, 
Uh, so hit the link in the description below. Sign up for that Patreon. You're definitely missing out. Keep pushing forward.